Hey guys, Too Legit City here. Today in the game of Fox Not Included, we're gonna be going over Beatus, a little bit of uranium, and of course the achievement, sweeter than honey. And of course that means today's video, we're gonna be touching the topic of radiation. Now, of course, to explain radiation, let's actually go over the uranium ore and the centrifuge. The centrifuge is gonna be a building after enough research, you'll be able to unlock that processes the uranium ore you will find on a either radioactive cluster in the point of interest, on the radioactive crust on the top, or in, in a radioactive biome in the uh, certain planetoids. If you are lucky enough to get one of these, the uranium ore, as you guys may find also in geodes, is going to be something that needs to be processed before it could be utilized by the research reactor. Now, a lot of the times, the research reactor is going to be the strongest source of radiation that is seemingly consistent as long as you have enriched uranium. And a lot of the times, a lot of people opt to use this for either research, creating rad bolts for the uh, rad bolt engine, or using the rad bolt to fuel something like maybe the diamond press, or even storing it at the chamber. Of course, the uh, research reactor only needs enriched uranium, so that's going to be the resource we're going to talk about. Now, the uranium centrifuge, though, the problem with this building is that it converts 10 kilograms of uranium ore into 2 kilograms of enriched uranium. Effectively, you lose about 80% of your mass, and the ratio here is a 5 to 1, meaning that for each 1 kilogram of enriched uranium you're going to want, that is the final product, you're going to have to spend 5 kilograms of uranium ore. Of course, if you double that, the ratio is exactly as you see right here. And although you do get liquid uranium, this is a useless byproduct that becomes depleted uranium. Although it is a metal and it's subtly radiated, meaning that you could get a little bit of radiation from it, it's not usually something that you guys want as you have better options. Now that being said, there is another way of uh, processing the uranium ore into your rich uranium, and that's going to be utilizing the betas. Over here we have a couple of betas and a beta hive, and what we have is that the beta hive actually processes enriched uranium from the uranium ore. The entire process works as the uh, hive will naturally need to be fed, and it actually produces workers for that those workers are going to be the bee tinies the bee tinies spawn once per cycle on a fixed rate from the beta hive if you have a bee tiny by itself in a separate room it's going to create its own beta hive and of course that will take three cycles to mature the effective space for a beta hive is actively just the six tiles as you can see right here we put a bee tiny spawned in of course we're in sandbox mode to show that and the bee tiny actually became a hive in this enclosed space. Although there is no uranium for that hive to feast on, it's still producing critters, meaning that the bee tiny will indefinitely spawn from the bee hives, assuming that there's space and there's no checks for it. There is no critter count mechanism like the other critters do. And of course, because of their short lifespan, they're gonna go through their lifespan and then pass meaning that we'll at most times get five to six critters if we're lucky with the timing. Now that being said, the beta hive, although it needs to be fed and you will constantly see food supply low if you don't feed it, nothing ever actually happens to the hive. You could utilize this by putting doors, separating each of the hives so that you could wrangle the bee tinies and then relocate them so that they could create a new hive if that's what you're looking for. The betas, when they do die, drops 1,000 grams of solid nuclear waste, meaning that you could actually utilize that strategy by having doors in between each hives and moving the bee tinies so that you could have them spawn a lot of bees and then have the bees pass after five cycles to get one kilogram of solid nuclear waste per adult beta. The bee tinies as well also drop the solid nuclear waste, but they will naturally mature into the adult form so there's nothing to worry about there. Now, when does a bee tiny choose to evolve into a adult or into a hive? The bee tiny actually checks to see if there is a hive in the vicinity that is active, meaning that if water drips down and then freezes and solidifies over a tile, that actually makes the bee hive inactive and the bee tiny will create a new hive. Same thing happens if sand falls down 
or if a tile underneath it melts and becomes a liquid, meaning that the beta hive is no longer on a solid surface, those things like that will disable the beta hive, causing the bee tinies to actively create a new one. Of course, the process is, at any case, going to happen at age two. They will wait till they're two years of age, and at the night of that day, they will either morph into a hive or into an adult with wings. Now, the adults, the beta hives, once they have the wings, they will actively look for uranium ore. If there's anything that's within the navigation range, they're going to want to run up to the uranium ore and harvest. When they actively mine from the uranium ore, they actually have a one-to-one -one ratio and do not destroy the tile. Meaning that in every case, it's always better off for the betas to mine the uranium ore themselves. And if you want to help them out, the best thing you could do is actually mine out the non-uranium tiles so that they have more reach into the uranium ore. Each time they harvest, they carry about a thousand grams on the beta and they will deliver it to the beta hive. This process happens about once per cycle per beta, as it seems that the betas will do this once per cycle, and it's not tied to anything such as hunger levels, tameness, or anything like that. The adult ones are not wranglable as well, although the tiny ones are. So you could always utilize the wrangle and then move them if you want to relocate the hive to a more lucrative spot, especially if the uranium in that area is completely wiped out. Now, that being said, the betas, what they will do is grab the uranium ore and deliver it to the hives. The hive's actually going to lose only 10% of the mass of the uranium ore, meaning that if you put in 1,000 kilograms of uranium ore, you're going to get 900 kilograms of enriched uranium. Because of that more attractive ratio compared to an 80% loss, it's always going to be better to have the beta hives process uranium ore in every case. You could also, if you have mined uranium already, drop them off and the betas will actually just pick them up from the ground and deliver it to the hives. That means that if you already have a little bit of uranium, let's say you had a radioactive crust, maybe you went to uh, drill cone, the point of interest with uranium, you could just drop it off here so that the beta hive could easily process your uranium. Now, of course, let's talk about some things about the betas and that they actually consume carbon dioxide. This is not food. They consume carbon dioxide as a means to have them go to sleep. If you guys didn't know, if they happen to breed CO2, both the adults and the bee tiny, they will actually go into sleep mode. All right. And just like that, we put in a little bit of CO2 and the betas, once they consume it, they will start going to sleep just like that. Now the betas though, the problem with this is that once they fall asleep, they will fall down into the ground because they fall down into the ground. If there is a liquid on that tile, they will not be able to keep inhaling the carbon dioxide, meaning that they will wake up about 15 seconds immediately. And when that happens, they're going to be active again. So that means the bee tinies, because if they're in a liquid like we are now, which is liquid chlorine, they're going to be not put to sleep. And the betas, the adult ones, if they were to fly up and to breathe in the CO2, they'll be asleep for around 15 seconds. That means that if you guys want to do the achievement safely, you guys have a small window. However, we have a strat for that later on. Another thing about the betas, the adults, is that while they're sleeping, they are actually a source of radiation. The betas only become a source of radiation when they are sleeping. During that sleeping animation, they actually emit over here, seemingly two tiles in every direction, omnidirectional, at a rate of about 1,440 from the center. As you go away from that though, it does get a lot less. So that's actually going to be the problem with the betas and putting them to sleep. If you have too many of them around the hive while you're trying to scoop out the enriched uranium, you're gonna run into the issue of getting radiation sickness potentially. This is not always going to happen, but is always going to be possible. Now, another thing about the uranium ore is when a beta delivers uranium ore to the hive, if we bring up the radiation overlay, it actually pulses radiation as you could see. 
This is a very cool effect as it's about 800 radiation in the outside ring at the strongest ring and it sends out shockwaves. This is not going to be active. You'll get about three pulses every thousand grams you get while the beehive is actually active. So it's not a lot. However, it's something to take note of. All right, so what we're gonna do now is go over how to get sweeter than honey. It's gonna be the achievement where you're going to want to uh, scoop out the enriched uranium without getting stung by a beta. To see if we do so, you could choose to either put in some carbon dioxide gas in the area so that the uh, flying beetas fall asleep while you have a small window to scoop up the bees. Instead, we're going to be showing you a different strategy today, and it revolves going underneath. If you guys can, I recommend finding a hive and trying to go underneath it. If you happen to have pockets already built from maybe the ice, you guys could follow that. Try to avoid mining uranium, of course, but you guys want to go underneath the hives to make this easier. Once you're able to position yourself underneath the hives by digging through, there is a 2x3 tile space right here. You're going to want to position yourself either one tile to the right or one tile to the left, depending on which side you're coming from. It doesn't really matter, and if it is a solid wall on one of the sides, that is the best case scenario. Now, if that happens, you do want to go to the open side, and you're going to want to do something like this. You're going to want to be underneath that tile, and then you're going to want to build a door before you mine it out. This protects you from the beetas slipping out to sting you. And by mining this out, you're going to get some abilities now to start building doors. And that's right, we're going to be utilizing nomadic doors. If you guys didn't know, wild critters cannot pass, and that means the nomadic door reigns supreme. That and the ease of access of building this door, it's very easy, it just requires a little bit of metal ore, covers two tiles, is a nomadic door, so gas and liquids go through, there's nothing to worry about. So, you're going to want to build the door first and then if you need ladders you're going to have to go for that and then afterwards you're going to want to build out the doors now ideally once we mine out this tile the order of operations is going to be you're going to want to build this door immediately after after which you're going to want to build a ladder here now after it's said and done it should look something like this you're going to have your ladder door ladder door and ideally you're going to want to have the door touching the side what this allows your dupe to do is actually stand on this tile now and this allows them to basically build anything they want around the surrounding area a little bit safely so let's go into that right now after we get this set up you're going to immediately want to build the top door and then you're also going to want to also build the doors on the left right here after which you're going to want to cap it off up top and if you do happen to have a beta inside the room still that flies, you could choose to take it out because it only has 5 hit points. Or you could also set up an automation on the pneumatic door, specifically the top one. As that allows you to set up a signal switch to free the uh, beta. And because if it's trapped, you're going to get stung. However, after you do scoop up the enriched uranium, I will advise you to deconstruct the doors as the doors do mess with the beta's AI when delivering the uranium to the hive. For whatever reason, it always wants to approach from the left side or right side from these levels, meaning that even if you have access from the top, it's going to want to scoop out around to deliver. And due to how the pathing works, the animation actually prevents them from making a delivery and after they attempt the delivery for the cycle they won't re-attempt until the next cycle so because of that you actually stop getting deliveries to your beta hive and that's a bad thing so we'll show you the next steps all right so we finished building the doors but as you guys could see we got a trap beta so we set up the signal switch open the door let it fly out the moment he flies out we are set now we have a little bit of a window as this has two cycles to grow before it becomes an adult. We could safely path into here now. And now what you would need to do is set up your high priority, of course, enable auto harvest. And not only that, this errand is a ranching errand. That means you don't need a skill, but you do need to turn on the job. In my case, I have two duplicates over here that can do it. So we'll have both of them turned on. Now that that's checked, we could see that we have some duplicants willing to come in now. 
and scoop up the uranium. Remember what I said before too, make sure you already have a storage bin to sweep out the enriched uranium because after you're done scooping it out, I advise to deconstruct the door so that you guys could allow the betas to continue process it. All right, and just like that, we have Alpa coming in with his gelato scoop and safely scooping in some enriched uranium. That's all it is, scooping up some ice cream. And once he's done, you're going to want to uh, find the enriched uranium on the ground and make sure to sweep it. There it is, new achievement. That's the uh, sweeter than honey achievement. Just like that. But guys, that has been the uh, betas explained and of course how to get sweeter than honey achievement safely. If you guys have any questions about this, leave a comment down below. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And of course, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you, guys.